It is day two of practice, last day before the tournament. Haven't found a whole lot magical yet, but we've got all day today to get something figured out. I've got the Illinois River Magician in the boat with me today. I think that's his nickname around here. He's a He knows this place as well as anybody. We just have to be around some biting fish. Looking forward to today. Let's get this party started. Number one. Mm -hmm. And where are we sending this? Uh, to that address. Okay, to Jamie? Yep, to Jamie. You got it. Have a good one. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Good job. Big. All right, we just picked up flowers for my wife. Happy anniversary, honey. Now we can get back to fishing. Oh, you. What color you got on? The white one. Okay. White with the orange. And I think that one chinned it. Dingers would probably be a good thing to have ready to go tomorrow. I hate them. I, I do too, Mark. Little guy. There's one. I think so. Yep. Hey, it's a walleye. Is it? I caught a walleye. <laughs> All kinds of fish here. Yeah, there's a lot of life on this stretch. So, so we know what. I know we can catch them. Bigger. If we control it, and we don't get anything. I know we can catch them. Bigger. Yeah. So let's go down and see if we can catch those. Okay. pushing 11 o'clock at night now I need to just wrap this up and go to bed got all the rods tied up uh, we're here at Spring Valley Illinois first tournament of the year I came down two days ago so we've had two days of practice I did a lot of looking around just seeing just trying to train my eyes on what life the right life looks like in areas where we might get bit so far what I was hoping I would see hasn't really played in with where we're even getting bit, if that makes sense. Where you think the right life is set up and you're coming through and you don't get bit, it, now you're not putting two and two together and you don't have a pattern to run based on just visual cues that you're seeing with your electronics. It's, it's kind of weird. So we just have to kind of hunker down and fish, I think. Uh, today we caught a few males doing everything really. We've been trolling plugs, uh, like a double stacker rig, which you'll see tomorrow. Just two in line, usually floating rapalas. Um, caught some jigging today, which was a lot of fun. Got to hold that 6'3 black rain in my hands, which is absolute. I don't care what brand rod you like. If you ever get a chance to pick up a 6'3 black rain and vertical jig with it, you'll be wowed. It's an incredible, incredible rod. So I hope I get to, I think what I'm gonna to do tomorrow in a couple areas is just troll up and jig down, troll up and jig down and uh, see how that goes. I anticipate a lot of boats around us, at least for a couple of the spots. That's just typical Spring Valley fashion. So there's a couple things that happen when there's a lot of boats in the area. Let's say you got 30 boats around you. When you look up and you look around at the fleet of boats around you, there, three out of those 30 boats are most likely all someone's going to be hooked up all the time. So every time you look up, another boat's hooked up with a fish. And that can start to wear on a person's mind during a tournament. You know, oh, they, they're getting one. Oh, they're, look, at on both sides of us, they're, they're catching fish. 
And you start to doubt what, if you're not the one that's reeling one in at that moment, you start to say, well, am I doing something wrong? And in reality, it's just, you need to put your blinders on for the most part, you know, understand what's going on around you, you know, because you can pick up on feeding windows and things like that that's happening, activity levels. But for the most part, put your blinders on, run your own programs, try to fine tune those programs throughout the day based on what you're experiencing and just fish, you know, if you're set, if you're caught up in what everybody else is doing, every time you're looking up and there's other things going on, you're not focusing on the task at hand, which is your own baits, keeping them in the perfect zone and fishing them to the best of their potential. And if your recipe is dialed in, when you encounter that pot of the right fish and that pot of right fish happens to be active, well, then it's your day. So that's kind of how this place goes. You just, if you come through the right area at the right time with a pretty dialed in program, you'll do all right. So that's the game plan tomorrow. We're going to go most likely just up river a little, a little bit. There's a big community hole up there that's holding a lot of fish. Hopefully we can be one of the lucky ones to get one of those golden unicorns to come in the boat tomorrow, which is a huge separator in this tournament when everyone's catching the same two pound saugers. And uh, if that's the case, well, we'll have a great day. And I'm hoping that tomorrow is the day that we can say, hey, we're the lucky ones today. And Oh, the other thing I brought is, um, let's say I, I said I was jigging, trolling cranks. The other thing I brought is some flies. We're going to probably try pulling some flies around. The one advantage that you have pulling flies in and amongst a lot of boats is you're not the fastest presentation going upstream. So now you can kind of let... You can kind of work with the current and let the current kind of be your your brakes or your guide as you're tacking back and forth. And you can be a little bit more thorough in specific spots. If there's really key spots that you want to hit, you can kind of just maneuver yourself in there and work them a little bit more thoroughly than you could if you were just plowing cranks through there. So if if I start to feel just like there's just it's just too busy around and I can't work stuff the right way, I did tie up a bunch of flies so that I can slow down and, and try to be thorough in there. So I'm excited to give that a shot too if we need to, but hopefully we can just put plugs on, plow upstream, and catch some big ones. I don't know. We'll see. Tomorrow's going to be a fun day, a little colder, maybe some snow or rain, a little bit of wind, but it's Spring Valley in the spring. What do you expect? That's what you expect, and I expect to have a fun day tomorrow. So let's get some rest. I'll see you in the morning. Volcata, Mark Michael, at 67. Good luck today, guys. Thanks, guys. Have fun. 68. Well, we had a short ride up, and now we're fishing. Looks like it's going to be a little congested up there, which is what we expected, and uh, I've already been seeing some fish crawling around on the bottom. Hopefully we can take advantage if there is an early window here, get something going right away. We've got just a mix of mostly floaters, hit sticks, floating raffles. I'm just long lining a jointed shad wrap back there too. Got one, Mark. Kind of getting towards the top of our of our trolling run. And fish. And Mark's hooked up with a fish, so hang on a second. Little guy. Mark just voted our second legal of the day. I'd like to put some jigs down and have some fun with them. I might put some hand warmers in pretty soon here, but it's blowing right down the gut, so I've got my big engine in gear, my power poles are down, 
I'm creeping up river at 0.8 miles an hour. It's it's just a it's a it's a really nice setup. I just picked up just for the first three minutes of jigging I just got one we're not up to any big ones yet but we got three we're about an hour and a half into the day and I'm okay with that we caught a fish jigging and that is fun so let's keep it up I have spot lock mark that's why it looks like that okay. A little piece of plastic, three eighths ounce jig head, and a minnow. Oh, that was a big one, Mark. Go back and get him. Go back and get him. Need a minnow? Yes, sir. Call your buddy, have him make another run. Looks like we're going to be doing this. I don't want to miss this barge. We just started coming into some more fish. Here's number five, Mark. Fish by these barges. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You got a fifth one or just put him in? Yep, there's a fifth one. Well, Mark, we've got a limit. Would you would you like to try to work this a little bit more and see if we better get a better grade? Would you like to go now that we have five, would you like to go look at other areas? Let's make another pass here. See if we can upgrade because we're catching fish by the barges almost every time. Yes, so let's go up here just above the barges, come down through. And if we can, if, if we're just catching the same ones, that we're gonna out of here. okay, good enough for you. Yeah, works for me. Oh, shoot, that I was trying to eat my, I was trying to eat my meat snacks. Well guys, it's about 12.30 now. We don't have a fish over two pounds yet, so we are bailing. And, huh? And Mark needs to take a leak. <laughs> Yes. That's 
a good one. Oh, about to say. Well, that's big. It's a female, Mark. Yep. Nice job, buddy. Need a hand? All that one as big as we how big was that work five pounder <laughs> not only was five but, uh. here's a fish Oof. Oh. Here's an upgrade. How about that, buddy? Can you get my lure untangled? Yes, sir. So we just got a little upgrade here. Almost a two pounder. Um, at the very end. Now it is time to go. So I almost got two upgrades here at the very end. That would have been nice. But pretty tough day overall. It looks. I, I like what I see here. I wouldn't mind coming and taking a stroll through here tomorrow at some point. Um, Going to give you a recap when we get back to the shop. But fun day. Just not the. This is the most fish we've caught today so far out of the last couple days of fishing. But the bigs evaded us today. That's all right. Time to get going. We'll see you guys when we get back. Mark's thinking eight pounds. I think he's right on the money. Got a couple bellies. Yeah. There you go, buddy. Wow. Cold now. Mark and I ended up with 8-11. So we are going to be way down in the pack. But all we need is 15 pounds tomorrow, Mark, and we'll make a move. What do you say? And don't forget, they got to do the same thing. Yes. Yes, that's very true. It's hard to duplicate things out here two days in a row. That's one thing this river is notorious for, is giving you your wish on one day and then crushing your dreams the next. <laughs> so if you could just have a semi-good day both days, you still end up halfway decent. Pretty mediocre day today. Dug ourselves into the 37th position. Weights are pretty tight in that area. Solid day tomorrow can still do some serious good. Some amazing weights were brought in today. We found some big walleyes today. Um, I'm pretty sure it was in the area where we started. It's just they found them and we didn't. Um, but I did have a ton of fun jigging today. Once we kind of got the trolling out of our system, we said, you know what, let's just let's just jig down a couple times. And man, was that fun. We never caught, a, I think the biggest fish we caught was just shy of two pounds jigging today but it was so fun. Uh, just a little three inch piece of plastic, a minnow really helped. And the most important part, at least most, almost every fish that we caught was caught on a stinger hook today. 
it was a it was a pop up and just a, a slow fall to the bottom or just a, a pop up probably this far off the bottom just bring it up hold it slowly let it down and they were just whacking it then that bike kind of tailed off so at that point we had five i did lose a big fish today jigging i felt it thump it set the hook and a big yellow blob I could see on active target came off the bottom. It was a hefty fish. I got it about two feet off the bottom and it pulled free. The big one got away, of course. But no, it was a that was a solid fish. That would have really helped. You know, you need a kicker bite like that each day to do well on this river or or several of those bites. So disappointing a little bit for the day, but we we kept our heads down all day long through the rain, sleet, a little bit of snow. About 45 minutes of sunshine, which felt amazing. And uh, we're ready to get after it again tomorrow. I, I think the predominant tactic that we're going to be leaning on for our bigger fish is this stacker rig. It's just two inline baits, usually a number 579 floating Rapala on either one of these. Um, you can change the length in between these two. And, and what, what this does, this front leading bait, the action is killed by the resistance that this one puts on it. So this is just kind of floating and swaying in the river, but it's a very buoyant bait. So what this offers is extra buoyancy to the rig to help float this around. And as you're coming in and out of current seams and different currents, it just sways a little bit more. Um, and some days they really show a preference for this one or this one. And it may also be a color preference thing too, but at least you've got a couple different actions going on a rig and offering that nice float to the entire rig. The, the more length you leave between these two, the higher this is floating above it, but the more freedom you give to that rear bait to do its thing as well. So there's kind of a, you just have to find that happy threshold of how far, you, how much line you want in between these two baits to make it work for what you're doing. And that can vary on how far behind the boat you're dragging it, how heavy a weight you have on, how fast you're pulling against the current, because the faster you pull against the current, and the further back your rig goes, the more your three-way rig collapses. That, that, that dropper lead that you have underneath that three-way, you know, becomes more of a severe angle, which lowers your entire rig closer to the bottom. So if you want to run your baits closer to the bottom, you let out a little bit more line or you speed up, which forces you to let out a little bit more line, which collapses that entire rig, lets everything lay down a little bit lower. And if you want to keep your baits up a little bit, if fish are you know, getting activated by coming up and eating, then you keep it tighter to the boat with a heavier weight or you slow your slow your troll down a little bit so that you're able to bring everything up. There's a lot of variables in pulling three ways that can make a really big difference, especially if fish are staying glued to bottom or you're in areas that are very duny and you need to, to trace those those depth changes. There's just a lot of things that go into finding the right balance of your dropper lead, leader length, spacer between the two baits. And that all just comes with playing around with it and monitoring your rod tips, having that transducer back here on the boat so I can actually see how the rigs are behaving has been really eye-opening for me to just visually see exactly how the rigs are behaving at all times. Um, that's how I've learned a lot about three-way rigging. A lot, you know, Before I was able to actually just watch my rigs fish it was a lot of educated guesses and really trying to dial in on your rod tips to see if your baits were digging or if your weights were dragging and you still have to do that but at least you have a nice visual visual reference uh, most of the time to just see how things are behaving down there anyways i think that's enough rambling for the day no excuses we didn't fish super clean today we we let the right fish go back to the bottom of the river but we're ready to get after it again tomorrow and um, I'm looking forward to one more day here on the Illinois River before we head home. So let's get some rest, tidy this mess up, and get after it tomorrow. <laughs> fish. Better one.
He might be on the other. Oh, no, here he comes. Need all the lure? Nope. All right, it is um, a little after 10 o'clock. We've been riding the struggle bus up here pretty good. I think most of the field has, because it went from 25 boats to six, six pretty quick. We've got five small ones. We need about 10 more pounds to do anything notable. So what we're going to do is run down river. Based on what I'm seeing here, I imagine we're about to be in a absolute pile of boats. You ready to do this, Mark? I'm ready. We're done playing around now. Let's just... We gave them a chance. We gave them a chance. Did we lose any big ones that we can talk about? Not yet. Okay. So... And I'm hoping we don't lose any. We're not losing anything today. We got to get them to bite first. <laughs> Let's go get them, buddy. And now we're headed back there again because our downriver stuff did not pan out. One little run and uh, I, my, my gut is telling me that weights are down today. It just seems like it is off. So two good bites could actually be a really big thing today. Now we've got about three hours to get two good bites. So that's the goal. If it doesn't pan out, it's all good. But I think uh, I think there's plenty of time to get those two good bites. So let's go get them, Mark. Fish. I get him. That 14 incher we can get rid of now. That was fish number one. <laughs> no, I just didn't think it was. It's not. It's just little. <laughs> They're all little today. <laughs> you guys are struggling too. Okay, so I'm wishful thinking. All right. I think that's Spring Valley for you. Like it's. It can treat you well one day, and it can treat you rotten the next. And uh, today was no exception. That's all right. Good way to stretch the legs to start the year. And now I feel warmed up and ready to play the rest of the season. Let's go see what these fish weigh. Two. Nice light bag. I don't want to, you know, make you work too hard to get up the oh, hill. Oh, my bad back. You took it easy. That's right. <laughs> kind of a disappointing day today. It, I mean, the weather was absolutely beautiful. I got to fish without our gloves on for over half the day. Uh, but the fishing was miserable. Uh, we only came in with six something pounds today. And we get we came into day two here in 37th place, so I'm sure we'll probably drop a little bit. But I think overall the weights seem to be down. A lot of people were crying the blues at the at check-in today, so maybe the whole river was fishing pretty tough. Who knows? I'm sure some people got them. But either way, great way to start the season. I'd say the, the most enjoyment I had this weekend 
was with this rod in my hand. I got to do a lot of vertical jigging with this 6.3 Black Rain from JT Outdoors. This thing is so light and so sensitive. It has a lot of power, but it's, I mean, it's just, it's a treat to hold on to. And I got to feel, even though they weren't big saugers, I got to feel several gratifying thunks uh, when, I, when I was jigging. The, the bait of choice here was, for me, was just a little 3 8 ounce jig, a little three inch piece of plastic. Uh, whites were working pretty good. A stinger hook was really important. Most of the fish I caught was on a stinger hook. Um, but either way, this was, this was what I was feeding them. They were pretty receptive to it, the ones that I did catch. But just, getting, just being able to hang on to a rod and only having 10, 15 feet of line out and feeling that whack was, was good enough for me. That made my weekend. I want to say thank you to Mark Michael for his hospitality. He let me in, stay with him for the weekend. He was an amazing wingman. He's an amazing friend. And I appreciate being able to come down here and fish with him. I think he's ready for a little siesta. If you can just tell by the look on that man's face, he's like, Joe, get this video over with and get me on the trailer. <laughs> so I just wanted to say thank you to Mark. And uh, I think we'll head home, clean the boat out, and finish the weekend with the family. But appreciate you guys watching. Got anything to say, Mark Michael? It was a It's always a pleasure sharing a boat with Joe. He's just uh, uh, a whole lot of knowledge. And, <laughs> you know, it, it doesn't matter to me where we're fishing. You always learn something when you fish with Joe. Always. I wish I could have put that knowledge to good use for us this it's weekend, Mark. It's stealing my river, buddy. It can tame some of the best fishermen. It sure does. It is hard to do two days in a row out here. No doubt about it. All right, guys. Have a good one. I'll talk to you later. See ya.